Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I was doing some reading in Psalms this morning, and I decided I wanted to share this one with you. It's titled, in the NASB 95, on blueletterbible.org. It's titled, An Evening Prayer for Sanctification and Protection. So along with Psalm 91, this would be a good one to pray when you feel you need extra protection, okay? I always read Psalm 91. I have it printed out beside my bed because <laughs> I know I won't take my big Bible. You know, there's nowhere to set it. Okay, so anyway, let's get started. This is Psalm 141. It's not very long, and it is a Psalm of David. A Psalm of David. O oh Lord, I call upon you. Hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. May my prayer be counted as incense before you. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that our prayers go up to the Lord like incense that pleases his nostrils? So he's saying, may my prayer be counted as incense before you. The lifting up of my hands as an evening offering. You see, that's why when we praise, we should lift our hands. That's mentioned in the Bible quite a bit in the Old Testament. Probably the New Testament also. I just can't remember right off where it would be. Okay, so some people I would go to church, you know, where half the church was raising their hands, praising the Lord. The other half would be like just standing there singing, la, 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 praise the Lord. And you could tell where their heart was. Or they just didn't feel comfortable raising their hands, you know. That's how my husbands were. Anyway, moving on. The Lord knows your heart, people. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice deeds of wickedness with men who do iniquity. And do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous smite me in kindness. That means, let the righteous tell me when I'm doing wrong with kindness and reprove me. It is oil upon the head. Do not let my head refuse it, for still my prayer is against their wicked deeds. Let me reread that. Let the righteous smite me in kindness. And the word in has a footnote. Lovingly or lovingly reprove me. It is oil upon the head. Do not let my head refuse it. For still my prayer is against their wicked deeds. The footnote says literally, and my prayer is, is in spite of their calamities. We all do things wrong. We all mess up. We all, there's nobody perfect. No, not one. That's a scripture. There is none perfect. No, not one. I'm going to take a second here to add a little something. You can firmly believe that certain scripture means blah, 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 whatever. You believe it in your heart. You heard it from the Lord. You, you think not heard as in like receiving a message that messengers get. But you feel he's shown you that's what this means. And you believe it. And you, if you have a teaching channel 
or any kind of YouTube channel where you share things and you throw in things now and then like I do, and you share what you firmly believe is right, that is not sinning. But if you are reproved and you don't look into what they're saying, like, okay, for instance, Okay, I already know the once saved, always saved is a lie from the pit of hell. The Lord told me that. I didn't decide it on my own. I knew it, but he told me that, so I made a video about it. That was on my old channel. All those videos that talked about that got destroyed, although I've mentioned it in videos on this 2.0 channel. Okay, now somebody comes along to try to reprove me and tries to tell me that that is that the way I believe is wrong that we are once we are saved God has us and nobody can take us out of his hand the Bible says that but it's conditional people we have to walk the walk we can't just talk the talk oh I love Jesus I believe in him he died for me he died on the cross was buried, rose again from my sins. And now that I've accepted him, I am his forever. And then you grow weary. And you stop doing what you were doing. You don't pray as much. You don't read your word as much. Next thing you know, you're not in it but once a week on Sunday morning. And so you start slipping up more and more and not repenting of it because you don't believe you need to repent. We all slip up every day. So imagine how many things you're racking up. Okay, so the Bible is clear about us needing to repent. It says, For if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is no sin too great. The only one we know of is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And this other thing, eating the cookies, you could say, is, I'm going to say worse than a sin. You are deliberately, even unknowingly, turning your back, saying, I trust them and it more than you. Do you see? Remember this scripture. My people perish for lack of knowledge. They were ignorant in their decision. Many who love the Lord. But they don't love him most. They don't trust him most. They don't go to him first. I was guilty of the same things. When the Lord opens your eyes to the truth, you need to share it. No matter if your family thinks you're crazy, no matter if your friends defriend you, we're going to call it, they leave you, they quit calling, they quit coming around, because you're just crazy. You just went off the deep end into something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we're at the very end of the end of the church age, oh yeah, and I mentioned that to one who refuses the cookies and says they're awake, but says, oh, it's not the end of the church age. We have a lot of time yet. So it's partial ignorance. <laughs> okay. What's wrong with people who do not understand fully what the cookies are they just think it's bad for them. So they're refusing it for now. What happens when it comes down, push comes to shove? You're left behind because you didn't even believe that we were near the end, much less prepare for it. And now the Lord put out a word which I shared earlier in the week about repenting for the Day of Atonement. That's tomorrow. How do we know what's going to happen? I'm not saying the rapture will happen. What if it's just a 
New York City is bombed, nuked. How many will die? How many will die in their sin because they didn't take a warning seriously to repent? Okay. I think I said all I meant to say. I'll move on. Holy Spirit, if there was anything else you want me to add, please speak it through my mouth. I want a guard on my mouth to keep from saying things I shouldn't. But I also want him to use my mouth to say what needs said. To wake people up. To instruct. Or I would quit. I've been so never more tempted to quit just put up a video saying I quit sorry I can't handle this anymore there's just too much and it isn't coming so so much it isn't so much what Google and those above them are doing as much as it is the inner <sighs> demons not inner not anymore praise the Lord but they can somehow put thoughts in your head from without. I don't understand it. I do not see how they get through the blood of the lamb, my armor, a wall of warrior angels, and another wall of the Holy Spirit fire from heaven. It's got to be because of where I live and all those people who ate the cookies full of demons now if they weren't already so is it any wonder anyway be careful who you hang around don't buddy up with them anymore if you know what I'm saying I can't spell it out for you stay away from the wicked and try to hang with the righteous. And if you don't know any. You just let Jesus be your best friend. And people on here that think and believe like you. Alright. So I don't really get this. For still my prayer is against their wicked deeds. I'm guessing it's saying. Even though this person might reprove me, they're doing blah, blah, blah. And I pray for them, Lord, that you would help them stop doing that. That's, that's the only way I can make sense of that verse. And that's in 141 verse 5. Psalm 141 verse 5. If you want to look it up, do some studying on your own. Uh, but I looked up the you know the Greek and he, the Hebrew meaning and I mean wicked is wicked it's un unjust deeds unrighteousness acting wrongly sinning whatever it doesn't mean we discount everything they say if we know they're basically a godly person they're basically they're following God they're repenting they're living like you live Except they got this thing going on. Like you got this thing going on. Everybody's got something. Or does something. And we need to continually look to the Lord. To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. Verse 6. Their judges are thrown down by the sides of the rock. And they hear my words, for they are pleasant. So I guess it's talking about evil people. Their judges are thrown down by the sides of the rock. They're cast aside. They, they mean nothing. Because they, they're not judging righteously. Do you hear it any other way? Let me know in the comments. The judges are thrown down. Okay. And they hear my words, for they are pleasant. 
That's not talking about candy-coated preaching. My words are pleasant. In other words, you're speaking kind, kindly, telling them, you need to repent out of love. You're saying, you need to repent of that. You need to stop doing that and ask the Lord for forgiveness. Too many people are afraid to speak up. It's hard. It's real hard. It's scary. You're afraid you'll lose them as a friend. I know it. I've lost many friends from speaking up. Verse 7. As when one plows and breaks open the earth, our bones have been scattered at the mouth of Sheol, which I looked up, and it is the nether world. It can just simply mean the grave. It can also mean hell or the pit. So if you're, in this instance, a good, righteous person that dies, back then, all they had to look forward to was being put in the ground. They rose when Jesus rose. Remember? The great earthquake happened when he died. It broke open the ground. And when Jesus rose from the dead, they rose too and visited the people around Jerusalem. Wow, that must have been one awesome day. Don't you think so? Verse 8. For my eyes are toward you, O God, the Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not leave me defenseless. And he won't, brothers and sisters. He will not leave you defenseless if you stay right with him and keep praying. Keep me from the jaws of the trap which they have set for me. This is the one I wanted to point out. The new world order has set the trap. I showed in a video on BitChute how the new, what used to be called the Freedom Tower. Have you noticed? They don't call it that anymore. It's called the One World Trade Center. And it looks like a V on two sides, and on the other two, it's an upside down V. Upside down V and a V. And on top is a needle. Check it out. Keep me from the jaws of the trap which they have set for me, and from the snares of those who do iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by safely. That's how I feel about it. also means altogether. While I pass by altogether. Just like in Psalm 91. Though a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right. I believe that's how it goes. A thousand on this side, ten thousand on that side. It will not harm me. I will only look on with my eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. You see, you live right. You keep your slate clean. You praise the Lord throughout it, whatever happens. When I tend to get a little frustrated, like yesterday, I think it was, like, God, why are we still here? Now this, they're doing this now. When, when, when are we going so we can come back and stop all this nonsense? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then I said, I'm sorry, Lord. I know that your ways are higher than our ways. And your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He's got it all planned out. All planned out. That's the end of this psalm. I want to do a real quick reminder for you. For those of you who need it. I'm going to Psalm 2. In the NASB 95. Because now they have an NASB ver version 20. From 2020. Excuse me. Alright. <clears throat> Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar 
and the peoples devising a vain thing. Why are the nations in an uproar? This is no more never been more true right now. This is a prophecy for today. Verse 2. The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together. We're not against Russia or China or Australia is not against, you know, we, we, it's not us against them. All those rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, the anointed also means Messiah. See, it's capital A, capital A or in Messiah. Let me look in tools. I'm sure they, they've parsed it out right, but I'm going to make sure. Because I was thinking of the anointed as being those of us who are anointed to not. We're, uh, we, we've been blessed to have open eyes. I'll put it that way. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. See, the King James Version has a small a. It's H 4899. But it means Messiah. Mashiach. Listen. Strong's H 4899. Mashiach. Mm. Who's Mashiach? It's a masculine noun. Twelve fifty five C T W O T reference. What's T W O T? Not sure. We'll move on. Outline of biblical usage is one. Uh, the the first number one in an outline is anointed, comma anointed one. Under that is capital A of the Messiah, comma messianic prince. That's Jesus. B. Anointed of the king of Israel. Okay, the king of Israel. That's a small K they're using. C. Of the high priest of Israel. D. Of Cyrus. Cyrus. Wasn't he the secular governor, ruler? That people compare Trump to Cyrus. But Trump is one of these rulers that Psalm 2 talks about. Don't mistake that. And of the patriarchs as anointed kings. Okay. But this says down here, Mashiach from age 4886 means anointed, usually a consecrated person, parentheses, as a king, priest, or saint, specifically the Messiah, capital M, anointed Messiah. Okay, so let's go back. I'm just letting you keep that in mind. Okay, so verse 2 said, The kings of the earth take their stand, <clears throat> and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, I believe it should mean Jesus and his true followers. Let us tear their fetters apart and cast away their cords from us. Okay, that's what they're saying. Like, that's the demons and the devil speaking. They're tired of us praying against their plans and standing up for what we believe in. There's not enough of it going on. But anyway, moving on. Verse 3. 
Oh, that was verse 3. Cast their cords from us. But here's verse 4. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he, capital H, will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his fury, saying, But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. Jesus will come at the end, destroy all them surrounding Jerusalem. That's the battle of Armageddon. Say, uh, Satan goes into the pit for a thousand years while the false prophet and the Antichrist get thrown into the lake of fire that was created for the fallen angels. Unfortunately, those who follow them and their health decisions for us will go with them because of the lack of knowledge I will surely tell, verse 7, I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, capital M, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance and the very ends of the earth as your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall shatter them like earthenware. Now therefore, O kings, show discernment. Take warning, O judges of the earth. And all of you who work for them, and all of you who censor our truth, and delete our videos and our comments. I'm speaking to you. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling. You don't take God Almighty and His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit lightly. They are all in all, above all in all and through all. There is only one God, one faith, and one baptism. Do you think it's water? Or do you think it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit? It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be water baptized. You can. Philip baptized the Ethiopian because he wanted to be. Because Philip told him all about how John the Baptist, I'm sure he did. Because he wanted to understand the scriptures. The prophecies he was reading in the Old Testament. That's, if you haven't read about Philip, how Philip, the Apostle Philip, was led to run up beside this horse and chariot carrying this Ethiopian who was trying to read the Old Testament. How he got a hold of it, there must have been a few copies around. He must have been really high up in Ethiopia, okay? And he wanted, Philip told him all about what the prophecy meant, that Jesus would come. I'm sure he told him that John came first and prophesied he was coming and baptized people for the repentance of sins. And, and then Jesus came and died and, and blah, 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 whatever. I mean, it doesn't tell you everything he said, right? But then he said, well, what, here's a lake. What would keep me from being baptized? So Philip baptized him. That does not mean everybody has to be baptized to be saved in water. Okay? When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, you commit to him your life, your future, your children, your career, your everything, your all in all. That's fully getting saved. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You get a partial infilling. You have to seek out the baptism of the Holy Spirit to receive it full. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. I know people will fight me on that. Oh no, I know I'm filled and I don't speak in tongues. Well, if you truly are, 
and you're not wanting to speak in tongues, then that's why you're not. You are blocking it. And why would you want to do that when we're commanded to pray in the Spirit at all times with all manners of prayers and petitions and for all the saints? How can you possibly know what all the saints need? When I put up these prayer requests and I ask you to pray for Rose or ask you to pray for Tessa's brother, you don't know what's going on with him. So praying in the Spirit is the way to get things done. I'm throwing it out there because we don't have many days left. And it, Jesus wants you to at least want it. Don't block it. It is not just a gift. It is a form of worship to pray to him in the spirit. It is music to his ears. I have to look up the scriptures about it. But I'm just telling you right now, I know it in my heart from what he has told me and what other messengers have received in the past about it. Now we're getting words about repenting, destruction is coming, or I'm soon to take my bride. You're hearing the one, you're hearing the other. We know the bride is, is, is taken out as the remnant. The Luke, book of Luke was written for the bride, and that is why Luke is the only chapter, the only book, the only gospel that says pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We grafted in Team Jesus and myself and others believe that the, the Lord is going to be taking some others with the first fruit rapture you could call it the first fruits to God and his Christ are those who leave first that's the barley harvest you may not be a bride you may not have even been told you were going but we believe there's going to be some happy surprises for some people who haven't been told but they are faithful they repent they live righteously. They serve the Lord the best to their ability. And they, it's like, they just, they know God. They know Jesus and Jesus knows them. And their lights are shining brightly. Okay. So verse 12, <laughs> I'm going to repeat verse 11. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling. Do homage to the Son that he not become angry and you perish in the way. <clears throat> homage. That's praising and worshiping. Praise and worship the Son that he not become angry for you not giving him praise and worship. And you perish in the way, for his wrath may soon be kindled. I told you, this psalm is for today. I'm sure parts of it had to do with Old Testament people and other folks before us. But basically, this is for today. His wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed are all who take refuge in him. They take refuge in Him. This goes back to not eating the cookies. You trust in Him to keep you from getting sick. All those folks out there that took it, that are eating, that ate the cookies, was so they wouldn't get sick. So they wouldn't die of this terrible COVID. Oh my God, I know so-and-so, they've been in the hospital so long, they had a ventilator and blah, blah, blah. Oh, they're ate up with it down in Georgia. I heard that one. 
Oh, this COVID is for real. How dare you say that? I better shut up lest I get this video removed. I pray you understand what I'm telling you. If you are left behind, don't you dare cave in and take it. You trust in the Lord to provide for you. You trust in Him. You get on your knees and you pray, Lord, where do I go? I'm being thrown out because I had to lose my job. Where do I find food, Lord? We're out. We have one more day's worth of food, Lord. You tell me where to find food for my kids. You may have grown older, not in innocent age. They're seven or eight and above. They know right from wrong. They didn't accept Jesus even though you were teaching them. They blew it off. Most kids up to about the age of 12, if you're teaching them, they're going. If they believe in Jesus as their Savior, the Lord doesn't expect them to know the Bible. He just expects them to believe in Him as their Savior. I pray you're teaching your children that. I believe anybody following me would be. But whoever you share this with, you teach your children now that Jesus is their Savior. You tell them. You let them know. You trust in Him. You trust in Him. And if they call you crazy, ah, get off my back, so what? It'll be planted in their head. And maybe it'll spare them when the time comes that they got to choose or go to a FEMA camp and probably get beheaded. They may even get tortured before they're beheaded. That could happen, brothers and sisters. They want, they're called re-education camps, internment camp. They put out a document years ago since I've been on YouTube, so it's been within the last 10 years, but it's been a long while. I remember my daughter reading it. She said, look at this page, Mom. It's going to stuff a rag in your mouth if you're talking or singing or trying to, you know, t talking. And who knows what will happen if you go ahead and hum. Will they do more? I probably, probably want to knock your block off. I don't know. But you can't worry about it. You have to give your heart to the Lord to the point where it doesn't matter. You take the blows for Jesus. Or you shut your mouth. Once they stuck a rag in it. And wait your turn. And praise him all the way there. To the gallows. Or to the firing squad. And know that it doesn't hurt. It, he will meet you at death's door. And you'll be there with him so quick. And you will get a special reward as a martyr. The martyrs. Rule and reign with Christ forever. Or in their millennial reign. When there's still humans to rule over. I'm pretty sure I got that right. But it's in the book of Revelation. The martyrs. When the martyrs. I'll look it up. Let me look up Revelation 6. I think it is. 6. Okay. The first seal, by the way, the rider on the white horse has been opened, and it's the white coats, doctors, and nurses. It's the medical field. All right. Verse 10. No. 9. The fifth seal, martyrs. When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. They didn't give up. They didn't run tailcoat, scared, and eat the cookies. Or back in the older days, they were martyred. Wow, there were a lot of martyrs after Jesus died and the Romans were in charge and they didn't want 
anything. They didn't want these Christians around. They didn't want them talking about worshiping some other king. And they were burned at the stake. Oil poured on them and lit like a torch. Fed to the lions. All kinds of things. Okay. And they cried out with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? They want revenge. They want to be... Of, of, they want to be... Um, Justified. They want justification. And there was given to each of them a white robe. And they were told that they should rest for a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, even as they had been, would be completed also. Okay. Notice, their souls were under the altar. The bodies are in the ground. They haven't risen yet. They rise at the sixth seal. The dead in Christ shall rise, and then we who are alive and remain, which also means have survived, we who are alive and have survived, We'll meet the Lord in the air. And thus shall we always be with the Lord. They're dead. Their bodies are dead. Their souls are in heaven. You get it? Okay. And they cried out with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging? Okay, wait. Somehow my, I did something to make it move up. Okay, so they were told to rest a little while until their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, even as they had been, would be completed also. And don't you know, Jesus knows already who that will be and they've already got a mansion in heaven. Keep your mind on that. If you're hearing this video and you end up being one of those people who you don't go in the first rapture, you go, you're destined for the second one or death before that. You will rise. You'll get your glorified body. Your soul and your body will unite and you'll have a glorified body. You will meet the Lord in the air with the, the people that have survived. They're still on earth. They get their glorified body. You all go up. And meet the Lord in the air. And thus shall you always be with the Lord. Your reward. Is a million times worth more. Than what you might have to go through. The hunger pains you might have to feel. Until God shows you. Till you trust him enough. To lead you to. A safe haven. A house left empty. And the kitchen's full of food. Who knows how he'll provide. He took care of Isaiah with a, a raven brought him bread and the brook brought him water. The brook brought him water until the brook dried up and the raven quit bringing bread and he sent him on his way. And he told him, go find the widow. And he had a widow who had a son make him bread with her very last little cup of flour or meal, whatever it was. Probably ground wheat. Probably like a flour. She adds a little oil, fries it up in a pan, and gives it to him. And by doing that, by her obedience, he took care of her, and she had a cupboard full of it. Oil and flour to feed them all three. So the Lord can provide if you have the faith, and you will keep your trust in him at all times. Don't falter. Is that the right word? Don't fall back. Don't let anybody talk you in to doing something that will steal your salvation. Okay? I'll end it here. With this I say I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person who hears this and I pray it gets shared.
on whatever platform you have. And with whoever you can email it to, the end is near. They're running out of time. Who needs to hear this? The Day of Atonement is tomorrow. Everybody.